Brand new Zion Weevil 3, baby. Look at what this gimbal can do. Which gimbal is right for me? The DJI RS3. We do have two new gimbals, the RS3 and the RS3 Pro. As great as these things can be and as useful as they've shown themselves to be, I absolutely hate using gimbals. It seems like every single time a new piece of gear drops, everyone on YouTube and TikTok is immediately talking about it. There are people who have it in their hands already, and literally the day of the drop, I see at least five, six, seven different reviews on one new piece of gear, and it makes you feel like you're missing out. And in the last six months, the main piece of gear that has been pretty much reviewed by everybody on this platform has been a gimbal. Whether it's a Ronin gimbal, whether it's a new Zion gimbal, it seems like everyone has an opinion on them and telling you which one to get. And that's perfectly fine, but I'm here to tell you why I personally don't like gimbals and I don't necessarily think you need one. What's going on guys, Juan back here today with a new video and as always very excited to be sitting here with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. Arguably one of the most valuable pieces of gear I own is one that I actively avoid using most of the time and that is this guy which is my Ronin RSC2 gimbal. Gimbals are incredible little products because the ability to have stable footage and incredibly smooth shots pretty much in the palm of your hand is something that I think most filmmakers nowadays really need to think about investing in because it is so useful in so many different scenarios. And as a sports content creator and videographer, I have to admit that these guys are really invaluable. I've gotten some great usage out of it. It's great for pregame scenics anytime you want to shoot wides or, you know, just show where you are of an arena or of a stadium. They're really, really good for warmups, especially if you can be on the field with the players, depending on the sport, or even if you're behind a pane of glass like in hockey. Using this to get really unique movement shots in pregame and warm ups, getting those ISO shots on this thing, you can get a lot of really cool and creative stuff. And especially if you work with a team or organization that gives you a lot of freedom, I've seen a lot of really, really interesting and incredibly creative shots that other sports creatives have gotten by using this very handy piece of gear. However, as great as these things can be and as useful as they've shown themselves to be, I absolutely hate using gimbals. This may be a hot take. There's probably gonna be people in the comments who say, oh, you don't know how to use it. You're probably not balancing it right. But just hear me out first before you put any comments down there and let me explain why. I'm making this video for the people who don't have a gimbal already. If you own one of these, you obviously know how handy it is. But if you're debating on spending four or $500 on one of these guys, which is a lot of money to start with, I'm gonna give you my three reasons as to why I don't like them and why I don't think they're an absolute necessity in a sports creative's toolbox. Reason number one, I don't like giving up control. If you followed me for a while, you know I'm a huge advocate and a fan of handheld shooting. Even though I do own one of these, I think I have my camera in a handheld ring at least 95% of the time, mostly because I truly enjoy the idea of having full control over things like the shots I'm getting in terms of the exposure, in terms of the actual composition, in terms of the movement in the shots. I like having that full control right in my hands and not being limited by an outside force. However, I'm not as confident when I put a camera on a gimbal and I've had a gimbal since the beginning of my career five years ago. I owned one almost at the start when I started shooting videos. And from now until then, I hate giving up that little bit of control to a piece of technology like this because it's a variable I can't control. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this thing has let me down several times in the past. Some of my favorite times to actually throw a camera up on the gimbal is during pregame and warm up and some of my more creative shots and some of my favorite gimbal shots came last summer when I was shooting the Toronto Argonauts. However, that also was the case when one of my biggest gimbal failures happened and it really turned me off from using it for a little while after that happened. I remember last year shooting one game in Hamilton. I shot warmups handheld and everything was totally fine. But then I decided to throw the camera up on the gimbal for the team intros and walkouts onto the field. And despite balancing it perfectly, despite calibrating it and making sure it was 100% ready to go, as soon as the guys hit the field and came out of the tunnel, this completely failed on me. It started beeping on me, the camera flopped over and it just didn't want to turn back on. And that absolutely crushed me because I missed a whole team walkout shot before the game. and. That was a piece I would have loved to have later on in the season. 
for storytelling reasons, for visual reasons, and I didn't have the video purely because this decided to fail on me at the worst possible time. And since that incident, I've definitely limited my use of this. I think I'm just kind of scarred by that incident and I don't really bust it out as frequently as I should, even during pregame and warm-up situations. My second reason for not liking gimbals and not necessarily recommending them to everybody is because I feel like they limit your creativity. I do wanna reiterate, the technology in these guys are absolutely insane now. The level of stability you can get is incredible, but I feel like after a while of using it, I just kind of got bored of what I was able to do with it. I feel like you can only do so much and do so many certain camera movements and push-ins and pull-outs and rotates and you know FPV modes before you kind of just get creatively bored of what you can do on a gimbal and there's only so much you can come up with creatively shot wise especially if you work in sports because I wouldn't even recommend you use this during the game apart from pre-game warm-ups and maybe even post-game at times I never really use this during sporting events and I would never recommend anyone throw their camera up on a gimbal to shoot any Anything like basketball, hockey, football, whatever. It's just not fast enough. It's just not precise enough. I would always shoot sports handheld. So apart from creativity, there's just not really many opportunities to use this thing in the middle of a sporting event. There's only certain times. And I think that's when gimbals are good is you use them the right place at the right time. But do you really get enough value from your purchase by just having it sit on the sidelines the whole time? I don't really think so. When I have the camera in my hands, I feel way more energized. If I wanna get low angle shots, I can just get low to the ground and hold the camera pointing upwards towards the athletes. I'm able to make quicker and more precise movements. I'm able to get the shots and the frames and the compositions that I want. And that's really invigorating to me as a creative. And I love that feeling of just having the full creative control in my hands and not having to worry about the limitations placed upon me by something like a gimbal. So when I don't restrict myself to the limitations of what a gimbal can do, I feel like Every single shot I get becomes much more intentional and that's a big thing for me. Every single shot I get, every single movement in that shot is because I want it to happen and it's not really depending on something like a gimbal and that kind of freedom really motivates me creatively and I absolutely love the ability to push myself and every time I have my camera in my hands, I want to push myself to get the best shot possible. And for me, that feeling just doesn't come from using a gimbal. I feel sluggish, I feel held back, and I don't really feel motivated creatively. The last reason I have for not liking gimbals is because it just doesn't match up with my shooting and creative style. I consider my style of sports videography to be very documentary-esque. I consider myself a fly on the wall. I don't really wanna get in the middle of things. I don't wanna interfere with the moment. I want to capture things exactly as they happen, the emotions, the situations, the highlights. I don't want to be in the middle of it. I want to be capturing it from the behind the scenes kind of style. And I think when I'm handheld, I'm able to blend in a lot more and not be noticed. And it allows me to shoot my style and my creative vision a lot easier. Versus when I'm on a gimbal, your camera footprint becomes a lot larger. So it becomes a lot more obvious as to why you're there. You don't really blend in as much. And I feel like I stick out like a bit of a sore thumb. When you walk into a room with a gimbal, it's immediately obvious what you're there to do. And I don't want to give off that energy. Also, I feel like we forget gimbals are pieces of technology that aren't commonplace. So unless you're a video or a creative in general, you probably don't know what this is and it's gonna garner a lot of attention, a lot of curiosity, and at times it might be intimidating for some people and that's the complete opposite of what I wanna give off when I'm shooting. Also, audio and focus are entirely compromised when you put a camera on a gimbal. Now, yes, you can technically balance a microphone with a camera here, but it just makes a bigger footprint. It looks a lot bigger and it's a lot harder to balance. And you can buy focus systems for gimbals these days, but that also just means more money out of your pocket. And if you already spent $500 on this, I doubt you wanna be spending any more just to add a focus system to it. Especially when it comes to audio, I don't wanna to have to make the decision whether or not I put a microphone on it and spend a few more minutes balancing it. I wanna have audio, period, because audio is one of the most underrated and one of the most important parts about videography and video content. So if I have the choice to have this on a handheld and have my microphone on it and capture that scratch audio, or maybe not do it and sacrifice that for smooth footage, I'm gonna take audio every single time. And those for the most part are the biggest reasons as to why I don't necessarily think I would recommend you get a gimbal slash why I don't like gimbals at all really. But I do wanna also say that this is all incredibly subjective and I don't want you to take my word for law. This is all because of my situation and my needs and my requirements when I'm doing my work. If your job or your position requires you to get social media content that's smooth, that's really clean looking, then yes, absolutely get a gimbal. Like I said, these things produce some incredible images 
years and I wouldn't have it if it didn't benefit me at some point here and there. However, I just feel like a lot of days on social media and YouTube, I feel like we're all very pressured into getting the biggest and bestest piece of gear. And if we don't have the newest gimbal or if we don't have the newest camera, we might feel left out. And I wanted to make this video to let you know that you don't need to own this to be a good content creator. You, need, you don't need to own this to make a good piece of It's falling apart on me. These pieces of gear won't make you a better or a worse filmmaker. And I don't think people should feel like if they don't have the latest and greatest Zion or DJI gimbal that they're not gonna be as good of a creative or a filmmaker compared to someone who does have it. These are great pieces of technology. And if you're debating on getting one, that's perfectly okay. Think about why you need it. Think about the limitations, think about the strengths and see if it lines up with what you're doing. But I don't think that you should feel like this is the end all be all piece of gear. I think the best creatives make do with what they have. And even though I have this gimbal, I don't necessarily use it all the time. I use it maybe 5% of the time and I feel entirely confident in my work and my ability to get the shot without it. Or at times if I have to, I will get the shot with this. It's just, it doesn't necessarily fit who I am or what I want to do as a creative. And with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys found it helpful, if you guys found it educational, if I helped you make a decision on whether or not to buy one of these things, please give the video a like and please subscribe. I would truly, truly appreciate it. And let me know down in the comments below. Are you thinking of buying a gimbal? What's been your experience with them? Are you a fan? Are yours breaking down on you like mine is? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear. For the record, it's not breaking down on me. It's just the back cap of this that's a little loose and it's not necessarily great. I might have to super glue that together. But that does it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.